Hi, I'm Pete Ravel, and what I want to do is uh, get a, give a bit of an overview, uh, maybe some kind of picture or some idea of what it is to tune a piano, okay? Uh, to begin with, of course, I've already taken on this grand piano, I've, uh, <clears throat> I've taken the uh, music holder off, and if you look in here, you'll notice for every note, there are three strings. Now, and oh, I started, I'm going to start this over again. For me, the way I like to tune them is I have a uh, strip mute here. And what I do is I block off the first and third string by putting, uh, putting this felt in between. And what that does is that allows me to listen to but one string. And that's the one I work with. After I get that uh, correct, then I take the two end ones and I uh, match them to the one that's correct. But we'll, you'll see that as we go on. Um, now some fellas, they, uh, they use just mutes, but again, I prefer, I prefer to mute the whole piano. Uh, I will do that. Alright, so now I'm coming up to the uh, pretty much a treble section here. And same thing though, I'm, <clears throat> I'm uh, muting off the two end strings and just want to listen to the center. Alright, and one more. I have this section here yet. The bass section down there will handle differently, but I'll show you that uh, when we get to it. Alrighty. Almost there, gang. All right. And there, and finally the high C. There we go. All right, this whole section is muted off. We're not going to be concerned with the bass section right now. Uh, what I've done, there's more than one way to uh, slay this dragon. And what I mean by that is, the old days, we had just a tuning fork, which I have. I got it in my kit. So I can bring the gall darn thing in. Uh, but you hit the tuning fork and you listen for beats and you take your A, this A here, which is, it's, and it's uh, tuned to A440. What I did to make it easier, and I think um, you'll be able to see better, and especially today, let me add this, uh, so many of the uh, newer people, they're using electronics. They're not even, <clears throat> they're not even uh, using the ear to tune. Okay, so they use uh, the electronic machines. I don't have one of those, but what I was able to find is a little, um, actually it's a guitar tuner. And I can probably, I think I can give you an idea just as well with this. Uh, what this does is uh, rather than it'll work as a, as a tuning fork, but if I go to my A, I have this, um, I turned it on here and I'm going to play my A. Now, when that, when the, uh, when the two red lights are on, it's dead on A440, and that's the first place we want to start. So let me try to use this and see how this works out. Okay, so right now, because it's a little, just a hair flat, not much. Crank her just a bit. That is very acceptable there. I'm, we're going to call that A440. Uh, the next thing I do is I go to an octave. I go A to A, and let's see. Pretty close, but uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but there are waves in it. Like that. I want to get that out of there. You notice I put more in, but that's because I sharpened the note. Now I'm going to back it off and make it solid. That's solid. Okay. Uh, the next thing we do, again, if we're doing it by ear, I would, I've got my A. I would go to my F. 
call them the beats. It takes about, I believe it's seven and a half between A and F. Uh, and, and that what the sound of that is, if you could kind of hear this up at the scene, it's wah, 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 wah. It's got that kind of sound. Wah, 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 like that. That comes out to be about seven and a half. I believe the number is seven and a half. take this guy here and we're going to check this but again if you were to try it you could somewhat that's our f that's right the double lights darn, that's darn close that's pretty darn good okay um it's, uh, to simplify it i guess you could actually go and use this guy to set your set your temperament that's the hardest part of tuning it's setting uh, the temper temperament, which is um, the first octave, the first 12, 11 notes, 12 notes that you tune. Uh, but you see, as I look at this now, my uh, F sharp here, according to this guy, is sharp. Let's see if we can put that. There we go. That's pretty darn. I'm going to go back to my F, and I'm going to silence a fourth that would be the F to the B flat. And that might be getting... There's my B. So rather than, again, uh, rather than confusing you with the business of uh, how many beats as we go up, let me set... I'm going to set the temperament using this, which is pretty much an imperfect unit, but we will come out with a nice, a pretty fair tuning anyway. So if I'm going to go, I'm going to use this guy and go to my G, and I notice my G is just a bit flat. Get on, okay, to the G sharp. And with the A, which we did. There. Oh, I did the B flat before. Uh, our B natural. Uh, another thing, it does not take much movement of the string to change the pitch. If you find you're cranking it up and nothing's changing, beware. You are probably on the wrong pin. And what invariably happens is we break a string. And of course, everybody who's ever tuned, first they, uh, we all break strings. Everybody's done it, and then you learn to be careful. You see, I'm up to the uh, D. I got the F, and from this point on, I am just going to do octaves, and this would be the first thing probably to work on is, is octaves. And if you can hear that, there's that little wow, wow, wow in there again, and that's that means one of them is off, and it'll be, of course, because my first F is tuned, it'll be this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that wow, wow out of it. Sounds like one. That's correct. Okay, so now we have done 12 notes. Um, in the real world, I would, I would check it by playing the thirds and listening for, uh, listening for the uh, beats to slightly increase as I go up. pretty 
fast. But it's, yeah, it, it is. Let's see what we can do with that E. Yep, that's better. Okay. Um, either I made a mistake with this guy or it's imperfect. But regardless, it's close though. So now I have my octaves done. The next thing I'm going to do, and if I can show you on the keyboard here, I am going to go octave to octave, G, a G sharp to G sharp, A to A, B flat to B flat, all the way down. And what I want to do is get those beats out of it. I want it to be solid, okay? I've already done the F. I'll now go to the F sharp. can check it by uh, going to a fourth, a, a fourth down, a fourth and a fifth. If I, I got a nice quiet fourth, that's correct. A little bit of bow in the fifth. That's very good, okay? But again, that's, that's to confuse the issue. And if, you're, if we're just kind of starting to see what this is about, I think right now let's concentrate more on just bringing in the octaves, and that's getting those woo-woo sound out of them, okay? So we're up, up to the G. This one is... I got the E, but if you remember I did the A before. Okay, now I'm coming to the first, to the break in the piano here. What I have at this point is two strings exposed. So if I go to play this note, I'm going to hear two strings. So what I've, I've got the uh, rubber mute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rubber mute between the two strings. And now when I play it, the only string you're going to hear will be the end string. Okay, and I want to tune that first. So I'm going behind here, and I showed it over here so you can see, but there it is. See, I've got, that's ready to play. So I will tune that first. Okay, that's solid. I'm going to take my mute and get it out of there. I want to now take the middle string and make sure that it's in line with the end string. That is good. Okay. I will now do the same thing on the uh, break on the other side. Yeah, can, uh, if you can hear that in there, the wah wah. Okay, I'm, again, I got it muted. I'm going to get that out of there. Pretty solid. In fact, that's very solid. Okay, I'm going to again pull the mute out and I'm going to. Put, uh, put the second string and just here we go. And then you notice how little I move the hammer to make the pitch change. Any time I'll I gotta repeat it again because it'll, <laughs> it's terrible when it happens, but. We invariably, new tuners have a tendency to get the wrong one on and they'll crank and crank and it doesn't change so they crank some more and then we have the string goes bye bye and you can have yourself a nice job. I hate changing strings. Especially, uh, not so much on grand pianos but on uprights or spinets. Good luck. Okay, um, maybe for expediency, do you think maybe I, I I could finish this off and then come back after I get the unison? So because this is probably becoming rather boring now. So I want to tell you what. Let me finish pulling all these unisons just like I did. Then we'll come back when that's done and move on from there. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Okay.
So I'm just, you know, because otherwise it's, you will lose interest, I think, yeah. don't you? You keep going. I'm, I'll keep rolling when you get over. Oh, that. okay. I pretty much reached the point of diminishing returns with this. I've spent too much time, and it's really close. So what I suggest when you play that note later on, play it fast. That was a little joke, by the way. Whoa, that's a dandy. By the way, just as a point, that the whole piano has gone flat over the winter. Well, what I am, I am picking the pitch up just a bit, but not much. Um, and I may add that um, this is a pretty solid piano. I have to say, it's uh, it's been in this cold environment uh, over the winter, and it's not really not bad at all. So it's a nice piano. Not bad. No, that's bad. And I'm a, <clears throat> I've come to another break here, so once again, I have two, uh, two strings exposed. I want to work with but one, so I'll put my mute in there. It's an F sharp. I'll go to the first pin, not the middle pin, because I'm working on the first string.
Okay, and now I'm going to pull in the middle string. And I want to get it as solid as possible. That's pretty solid. Well, once again, <clears throat> you can always play fast. Okay, we're going to, I've had the same thing, uh, the, um, the break here, uh, where we're on the G, I've, I've blocked off the first two. That's real close. Okay, let's get that. Okay. Uh, one other thing, and uh, this probably wouldn't concern you right now, but what I like to do, um, when I get to this section of the piano, I like to uh, begin to stretch that top a little bit, not to make it sharp, but to make it feel like it's going to uh, a little sharp. What happens is, I find or believe and when I, that it adds a bit of excitement to the piano it gives it a boom I don't know if you've ever heard of somebody uh, might say uh, geez that piano is dead um, I found that a dead piano there's three points pretty much you can put uh, you can put a pin or a string you got your dead center you could be just a little bit off the center flat or a little bit off sharp well there's a point again and this comes probably more with experience but I always try to get that little bit of edge on the sharp side because it, it'll it mix when you're playing, boom, there's excitement, I think. Again, you may, somebody else may tell you I'm on drugs, but I'm not. This is the way it is. <laughs> oh, anyway, I'm going to continue on here. Wait. By the way, it does help. This is a, uh, tuning pianos is not for the faint of heart. Anyway, I'm on my way. Let's finish this up. See, it's just a little bit on the sharp side. I hear a few false beats, but uh, we deal with that later or some other time. Need, needn't be concerned about that right now. False beats I'm talking about. I try to stretch him just a little bit. Okay. Uh, one other thing, uh, this last section here those are known as bell tones, and anytime you play the piano, because they're not muted, as you notice, there's uh, there's no dampers on them. What happens is, if I play a G over here, it's going to activate a G here, and it's it's going to make for a rounder sound. Okay, but they're called bell tones, and right now I'm going to bring in the strings, uh, bring in the unisons. That's the strings that are out of tune. So I'm going to start with this G here. Do you remember I did two already? I've got this third. I got this third string here to bring in. There's. That's close enough for jazz, fellas. I did find, uh, I remember when I first started, these are the toughest ones to bring in. But uh, it takes perseverance, and you get it. It'll come, especially when we get down, way down over here, as you'll see.
What I'm doing, I'm uh, I'm uh, <clears throat> doing the two end strings. I put in the mute after I tune the one because uh, I just want to concentrate on one string at a time. There we go. We're up to the B. That'll sound okay. A little bit. You hear maybe a little false false beat here. Okay. enough. That's good. Huh? Okay, that's solid. Moving right along. That's good, right there. That's that's good. Need a little bit in here. Too way too sharp. This is the section where I say it probably takes it's the hard, or and also way way down on the bottom end. Where we at here? Sharp. Right in there. Flat. And I, I just to show you, sometimes you just have to work it till you hear it. That's good. Right there, I can live with that. All right. <clears throat> right there. All right. Yeah, that's good. Coming along nicely. Got this whip, fellas. <laughs> I have a key hanging up here that I will deal with a little later on. Okay, there, and and now finally the high C, and I found that somewhere after 60, it's pretty hard to hear that high C, but let's see. Sounds beautiful. Close enough for jazz. We've uh, now taken care of uh, the bell tones. I myself next want to come into this section and once again just pull it in unison. <laughs> 
These generally are easier to work with. I, I hope you can hear those, the vibrations in there. That's good. Get that rid of that. Now let's get the third one. There it is. Okay, not bad. It's gonna be just fine. All right, that's gonna give us a nice sound. Whoa. That'll work. Whoop, that one's out. Yeah, I hope you can hear how it's when it pulls in. That's that's quite a bit out. Yeah, it's coming along pretty solid. This is going to be sound nice when it's done. Son of a gun doesn't want to go. We'll live with that. Oh, yes, okay. That's okay. Yeah, this is good. Coming along. Good and yep. Good.
Yep. We're almost there, fellas. Close enough for jazz. bit of false beat there I'd say but it's we ain't gonna notice it because we'll play fast Sounds like something went out here. Let's see. It sure did. in here to stop the sound so it's uh, this it's gonna ring in here okay well uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work my way down I uh, <clears throat> had gone to the uh, my uh, temperament F I'm gonna start now with going down from there and this is my E I'm gonna bring it in with this other E which was part of the temperament and that I tuned that initially when we first started to the break again so that means we put the mute in Now, now the bass section has two strings, and then of course at the, uh, the lowest level there's but one string. So what I'm going to use is just the rubber mute. I will mute one of the strings off, I will tune one, and then I'll bring it in with the first string. I'm going to be natural. Okay, now I've got that. I will move the mute to the next pair. 
single strings right now and uh, so we're just gonna tune the single string section and the same thing we're gonna pull the unisons and of course this is the section where the temperament uh, the temperament scale the um, octave is okay <laughs>
Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm not using a mute, uh, only because I can. Not use a mute, that is. Or don't have to, actually. This section is pretty easy to pull in, I find. Some call it the home stretch. Just so you know, one in four piano tuners do not make it to 90. They go mad. They do. They try to drive you crazy. absolutely nothing unless you play it and it sounds okay so I am gonna put my <clears throat> reputation right on the line and I'm gonna see uh, let me move this out of the way mm -hmm. Let's smooth out those hands a little bit all right
right, I know some of you gang out there are saying something didn't sound right. Now, I heard it too, but it wasn't the piano, it wasn't the tuning, it was the player. Because, what the heck, we make mistakes. Anyway, that's uh, what I wanted to do here is just kind of give you a quick overview to tuning a piano. There's certainly, and you, uh, probably as you know, there's quite a bit more to it, a lot more to it than what I did, but at least maybe this will give you a taste of what it might be like to tune a piano, or maybe somebody young out there is thinking about a career. It's a wonderful career. Uh, take quite some time to learn. We don't have apprenticeships like apprenticeships, you know, but uh, you kind of serve a tune in a lot of pianos. But in, in the, if you work at it, it does come, and it's a honorable and a pretty nice profession. I am Pete Ravel. Thanks for watching.